Hi guys, next update in the Revel Custom Chopper build and uh, as you can see it's a bit more interesting than the last one. We've actually got some colour on some of the parts. The body panels are in this particular colour. This is a Humbrol Enamel Gloss Metallic number 53 I think off the top of my head. Uh, 51. Number 51, which is either Sunset or Sunrise Red. But as you can see, it's kind of like a reddy, a pink um, sort of metallic. Very hot roddy kind of colour. And I was really sort of struggling trying to think of a colour to use. And I saw that tin. Now that's one that I picked up years ago in a clearance bin in an art shop rummaging through um, a clearance bin in an art shop and there were stacks and stacks of old tins of Revel enamel paints they were obviously getting rid of and uh, I picked up a couple of very nice metallics one of the metallics I picked up was the sort of grey blue colour that I used on the Dodge Charger SRT uh, that you can see if you look back through my channel which I built for some friends in America that had a car of uh, the same make and a very similar colour and this one, which is the first time I've used it, and I saw the tin and I thought, hmm, I'll give that a shot. And that's over white primer, so if you did that over grey primer, obviously, it would be a little a little redder and a bit less pink, maybe. But I think it looks really funky. I like it. Um, so that's the paint coat on, and I've applied the decals to the rear fender mudguard. And I've done the tribal type and to the tank. Now these conforming, getting them to conform to this tank were a little tricky because this is the long tank, which the um, the Skull Crusader Skull decals are designed for to go down the sides. Whereas this particular tribal pattern and the side ones, which I haven't put on, are designed for the shorter tank, which I'm not using. So to get them to conform to the curve at the top was a little tricky. And the decals are very, very thick, so they took quite a bit of beating into submission with Microsol. But I'm quite pleased with those. And the next thing to go on is clear coat. And what I'm going to be trying for the first time is some of this, which is zero clear coat, which is pre-thinned uh, lacquer or cellulose clear coat, nice and crystal clear and I want to give that a try as an alternative to the enamel because I really like the hard finish of the enamel but as as you may know um, the oil based enamels can have a tendency to yellow and in fact the the varnish um, out of the tin is a little yellow so I thought I've, I've heard good things about zero I don't want to try the 2k I don't want to go to that kind of bother but uh, the pre-thinned lacquer cellulose clear coat I thought I'll give that a try should uh, dry nice and hard and still allow me to polish it up so that's the bodywork I have done various engine bits in um, airframe aluminium or aluminium for our uh, um, colonial cousins and as you can see it's nice and shiny that's over gloss grey so it's it's not uh, super duper shiny as it would be over gloss black which was an in that was the intention to see how that would come out I've also done a similar thing with the engine um, but uh, I think to be honest I would have preferred that to be a little shinier because what I've done is the crankcase and the rocker caps have been done in polished uh, airframe aluminium and the push rod tubes and then the actual engine barrels and head have been done in true metals aka true metals iron which have then been buffed sealed with clear and it's had a, a dark blue grey oil wash in between the fins just to give that a little bit of contrast and I think it looks quite nice but it could have done with being a little shinier uh, these are the AK true metals iron which are brush painted but thinned with enamel thinners but brush painted on and buffed up and I'm not hugely um, impressed with that in a brush painting sense so what I'm going to try next time I do some I still use the same stuff but I'm going to try airbrushing it and see how that goes 
because uh, the problem with brush painting it straight from the tube is it's very thick and you, it doesn't level out as well. Whereas if you thin it a little bit, it levels out beautifully, but I'm not hugely impressed by the sheen on that in comparison to the Humbrol Metal Coat Polish Stainless that I normally use. But uh, we'll, we'll see with the next build how that goes. The chain I've painted up and detailed and I'm just waiting for the last bits of um, paint to clear and then I'll give that an oil wash just to pick out the chain detail a, a bit more. Uh, the foot pegs and air cleaner cover and hand grips I've still got to paint. The pulleys I've done in aluminium and buffed up as you can see and then the pulley belt I'm going to be doing in Tamiya NATO black. The front forks are in gloss black at the fork lowers and um, airframe aluminium for the triple clamps and fork tubes, fork stanchions um, and as I said the gearbox likewise. The wheels I'm particularly pleased with. I decided I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to do a red spoke um, wheels because I saw these on a custom build, on an actual custom build some time ago and I thought they looked absolutely fantastic. I really liked them. So I knew right from the outset that I wanted to do spoke wheels and I wanted them red. So I have uh, red spoked wheels and I thought what would go very nicely with that are white walls. So I did that, fitted the tyres and then um, masked these using a circle cutter and sprayed them with Vallejo Ivory, I think it is. It's just an off-white so it's not too stark glaring white but uh, it gives a nice, a nice white wall and the best thing about them when being Vallejo and water based is the little bits that did creep under the tread were easy to clean up with a cotton bud soaked in water so that's the... Uh, that's the wheels with its with the white wall tires, which I'm uh, really really pleased with. I like those. I do like those. Um, with hindsight, I'm not so sure how well it's going to look with the bodywork, but we'll see when it all goes together. And then lastly, we've got the exhausts, which I was unsure whether to go with the, this satin black, which I've chosen to go with, or uh, a chrome but uh, I decided to go with the satin black just to break it up a little bit. So we've got a gloss black frame with the chrome engine and gearbox or the shiny engine and gearbox. And then uh, satin black exhaust, gloss black handlebars. Uh, so there's a bit of contrast and comparison between them all. And I'm wanting also to you put an exhaust wrap on the exhaust, but I'm not yet sure how I'm going to achieve that. I, I need to find a fabric that will not look over scale that I can cut to size and wrap the exhaust header section with and we'll see how that goes but I think that will look quite nice. So that's where we're at. Uh, as I say the next step is clear coat and on the body panels so I, I shall let you know. Oh the other thing I've done is the the saddle which I've done in SS Camo Black Brown Vallejo initially and then a heavy dry brushing of Shadows Flesh Vallejo uh, to give a leather effect and then I'm going to go with a sort of probably a basic flesh tone or a sand colour to give it a very light dry brushing just to give it a slightly scuffed worn leather type look. Um, so that's that's where we're at. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, so I'm really pleased with the wheels, the white wall tyres and the red spokes. And um, So next step is clear coat and then once that's cleared and I've given that a bit of a polish and, uh, and a buff up, it's, uh, it's a case of hand painting a few little bits and pieces and then starting some serious assembly. So thank you for watching and check back in the next video.